wide. Hello everyone, I'm TG, and I'm here to talk to you about this amazing game, Aliens Fireteam Elite. Now, if you're like me, and I know I am, you guys are ready for a challenge. You're about to dive into Extreme and Insane, and you're wondering, where are the choke points on each map? Where are the best places to hold up to make sure our team doesn't get wiped? So what I'm going to do is go through each mission point by point and show you guys where to set up. Now, some of them might seem a little straightforward, but if that's the case, go ahead and just skip over to the ones that you need to know. So as Vasquez says, let's rock. In priority one ingress, trigger the battle and then run all the way back the way you came. Whenever you get to this opening, that's where you guys want to hunker down and do battle with the Xenos. This way, you don't get overrun from the front and the back and you can have one straight alley to take them all out. Next, you want to trigger the Xenos in this room, pick up your ammo, and then go back the way you came. Stand through these doors, that way you get another straight alley to deal with the Xenos as opposed to having to deal with them on both sides. It's really easy to get overwhelmed in this room, because the Xenos start on one side, but eventually they start coming from both, and you have to deal with an elite warrior. So trigger the fight, and then run down here, set up, and you're good to go. In this room, you want to trigger the fight, and then escape back the way you came. If you can keep a member of your team through these back doors, that's even better because then you'll be able to get a vantage point on the Xenos that start spawning in this hallway. But don't worry, even if you don't, there's only a few that spawn here and they're easy enough to deal with. This next room is probably the hardest in the whole level. What you want to do is trigger the fight and then run back up this way. A few Xenos will spawn here, take them out and then hunker down. The only thing you need to worry about is about halfway through the fight there is a chance that the bursters can spawn here. So you want to be aware of that and keep an eye on your motion tracker. For the last encounter in the level, you want to put your defenses here and pedal back to the way you came. Defend these two catwalks. The great thing about defending back here is it actually causes the warrior that spawns at 60 seconds remaining to not spawn anymore. So you won't have to worry about dealing with an elite. The first battle in Priority 1 Rescue is one that took me a little while to figure out. What you want to do is trigger the fight and then run down here. This is where you would regularly be going after the fight. You want to use this hallway as your choke point. Next, things can get a little bit hairy here, but here's the best place that I found to stay while you're dealing with the valve handle. Next is pretty straightforward. Trigger the battle and then backpedal to inside these doors. It's going to give you a much better vantage point on all the Xenos coming from all around you. Next is your first encounter with Monica. And I'm not going to lie, I found this one whenever I was going kamikaze one run for no reason. What you want to do is run through here, which is where you would go at the end of the battle. And you actually want to hold up in this room. That way you're bottlenecking all the Xenos into one place. Finally is this room. This is one of the hardest encounters in the entire game when it comes to extreme and insane. What you want to do is trigger the fight and then run over here to the right. In this corner, you'll be able to bottleneck all the Xenos as well as Monica. The only thing you need to be mindful of is a few Xenos will trickle out from behind you, so just take a look at your motion tracker. When it comes to priority one extract, the first place you want to hold up is right back here. Trigger the fight and jump back the way you came. This way you're bottlenecking all the Xenos into one corridor. For this next fight, you want to run down to this little spare area. This way you're bottlenecking the Xenos and Hunnaker tends to not try to be a hero when he's down here. Next, resist the urge to fight in the initial corridor because Xenos can actually spawn behind you. You want to run in here, that way you're safe from the back. This next one is the most annoying room in this level. You want to have somebody stand back here and keep the door open, trigger the fight, and then funnel all the Xenos through here. 
For the final battle, this might seem a little weird, but believe me, it works. Run up these stairs where you'll have to use the terminal halfway through the battle. Hold up here and nothing can come from behind you and it gives you ample space and time to take out enemies down below and as they run up the stairs to get you. With the added benefit of putting you right beside the terminal when you need to press it. The first battle in Giants of the Earth Insertion is pretty straightforward. Trigger the fight and then jump right back across this bridge. That way you're funneling all the Xenos in one spot. This next one is one that I found again while playing like a cowboy. Run towards where you would go at the end of the fight, turn around and bottleneck all the Xenos into this area. You'll also get a chance to pick them off from a distance. Another straightforward fight is here. Trigger the Xenos and then just jump back right through the door and you guys are perfectly protected on all sides but the front. For this next one, you're going to want to trigger the fight and then run back right the way you came. You have ample space here for a bottleneck and you'll be able to stop the Xenos from the front and whenever they start spawning from the back. The goal of this next fight is to hold up by the ammo box. So you want to trigger the Xenos and then run back the way you came. This way you'll have a huge avenue to take down the enemy before they even get to you. For the penultimate fight, you want to trigger the controls for the bridge and then stand right here until it's time to hop across. When beginning Giants in the Earth contact, I like to hold up right here. A lot of people hold up back near the beginning door, but if you do that, you can sometimes split the Xenos into two groups on the left and right. Now, if you're a magnificent coward like me, you'll love this next one. Trigger the fight and run all the way back to the door that you came in. When you get there, keep those eyes front and center. You're gonna want one member of your team on each side here to see any stragglers that come from the left and right, but overall, you're gonna be looking down this corridor right here. For this next fight, you're going to want to jump back through the doors that you came and take on the Xenos. Later on, keep two members of your team here and have one runner go trigger the next part of the fight and run back. After dealing with the synths in this next fight, for some reason this door stays open, so run back through this door and take on the Xenos as they come through. Things can get a little crazy in the final fight, but I like to hold up on this left side. That way, all the synths and xenos can fight each other over on the right, including when the warriors spawn near the end of the fight. You just gotta keep an eye on the few stragglers that come from this side. If you like some stinky, stinky cheddar cheese in the first fight of Giants in the Earth Evacuation, Run down these stairs and let the synths and xenos fight amongst themselves. Now things in this next room can go one of two ways. One, you could be dealing with landmines where all you have to do is run to the opposite side of the room and hold up there and waiting for xenos. Or you might have to deal with some of these turrets. Take out the turrets that are impeding your progress and run to the opposite side of the room. When you get there, just wait for the xenos to funnel in and you'll take care of them, no problem. Unfortunately, the final battle doesn't really have a great vantage point. What you're going to want to do is hold up on this first platform until you're done with the first two power cores. When you finish, you're going to want to run to the opposite platform. And your first order of business should be booby trapping this door, because two synths are going to come through here and you don't want to deal with them. After that, hold up here and pay close attention to the left side of the platform. That's where you're going to see incinerators and heavies. The Gift of Fire Recon starts off with a bang. This is a tough interaction. What you want to do is hold up at this door that you would be running through after the battle. Now the next battle is another tough one. So you know what? We're going to cheat. Keep a member of your team through this door, keeping it open, and drop your LiDAR scanner. After the battle starts, 
all of you run back through these doors and you're gonna have a great little avenue to deal with the Xenos. The second part of the interaction is a no-brainer. Just hold up across the bridge. Next is another tough fight. You're gonna to wanna to hold up at this back door that you would exit the room from. This way, you have a vantage point on the Xenos coming from the left and the right. So finally, we get a break. After dropping your LiDAR scanners, run back through the door you came in and set up shop. This way, you can deal with all the Xenos in one bottleneck. Now the final battle might seem intimidating, but it's actually not that bad. You're going to want to hold up in this exit hallway that you would use to finish the level. As long as your defenses are put down adequately, you can push back almost any amount of Xenos that come down this room. A lot of fights in the Gift of Fire Advance can be handled the same way. Run back through the hallway you came in and hold up in that bottleneck. Next, you're going to do the exact same thing. Head back down through the hallway you came in. I think this next one is pretty well known. What you're going to want to do is trigger the fight and then run up these ramps to this bridge. Run about halfway across the bridge, turn around and you have a great vantage point to deal with all the Xenos and you should have no problem coming out on top of this fight. Now for a nice little change of pace, what we're going to do is run back the way we came. Hold up in this hallway until all the Xenos are done and then move on. Once you get to the far side of this room and you're dealing with the next fight, you're going to run towards the exit of the room and hold up in that hallway for another similar battle. Finally, instead of getting surrounded at the end, run towards the end of the level. This is where you want to hold up. You'll be able to easily deal with any of the Xenos coming your way. The only kicker is there will be one warrior that spawns here, so save yourself a cryo grid and take him down when he spawns. The Gift of Fire boarding is one of those levels where positioning is key. For this first fight, trigger the battle and then run back the way you came to this hallway. That way, you're only going to have to deal with all these enemies in one tight bottleneck. The next battle is not too difficult, but it's easy to get overwhelmed if you're not prepared. Trigger the fight and then run back the way you came, that way you're dealing with all the poppers in a straight line. For this next tough fight, you're going to want to run towards where the pathogen stalker spawned. Hold up here, this way you don't need to deal with the poppers crawling on the wall. You can deal with everything in one tight bottleneck. For the next battle, you're going to want to trigger the fight and then run, guess where, back the way you came. First, you're going to have to deal with the pathogen coming from the left, and then they'll switch sides to the right. So standing in this hallway is optimal. This next one is another short fight that can get overwhelming. You want to stand in the hallway that you came through. That way you're dealing with all the poppers and pathogen in one straight line. Next is one I don't see a lot of people use. Position your team on opposite sides of this ramp. That way you can pincer the pathogen. You also get a chance to take them down from a distance before they get to you. Now the final fight is where things get real. You're going to want to trigger the battle and then take down the first capacitor. When you're done, run to this little room in the right and hold up until things mellow out. You're also able to take a few pot shots at some of the capacitors, but not all of them. So after you take down a big chunk of pathogen and a stalker, then you can move out and take care of the rest of the capacitors. The first choke in the only way to be sure breach was one that I found completely by accident. Start the fight and run over to this platform. It may seem overwhelming, but it's surprisingly easy to defend from both sides. In fact, it almost forces the synths into a kind of bottleneck. Now the next battle takes place in one of two different areas. If you're lucky enough to get this one, 
run all the way to the end of where the Xenos spawn and hold up here. And if you're unlucky enough to get the other battle, Godspeed. The next one is similar to the penultimate fight in Priority 1 Rescue. Start the battle and run to the opposite side of the corridor. Hold up in the exit door. The final battle can be a little bit difficult if your team doesn't focus on their defenses. Prio grids are a must. Hold up in this exit door once the battle begins and be careful. Things are gonna get spicy. The first battle of the only way to be sure search isn't really that difficult. But if you want to make things a little bit easier, head up these stairs and hide in this pocket to the right. Have two members of the team dealing with the spitters over the banister and have one member stopping the Xenos from getting to you. Next, you want to trigger the crusher and run back towards the way you came. Use the length of this hallway to your advantage. You want to trigger this next fight and then run back the way you came and hold up down these stairs. The only thing you need to keep your eye on is sometimes a drone likes to come from behind. The penultimate fight isn't too hard, but it can quickly get out of hand. So what you want to do is hold up back here and set up your defenses. That way you're dealing with all the Xenos coming from one direction. The final battle is almost identical to the final battle in Breach. What you're going to want to do is hold up by the exit door and be on top of your defenses, especially cryo grids, and keep an eye out for elites. The only way to be sure Regicide starts off with a bang. For this first fight, you're going to want to hold up back towards the doors that you came in, making sure not too many Xenos get onto the ceiling. Next, instead of having enemies surround you, head back up the stairs you came and hold up here. That way you have a nice bottleneck for all the enemies. For this next fight, it's really important you do two things. Clear out some of the eggs and have one member of your team keeping this back door to the left open. That way, whenever the fight starts, you can have a whole corridor to deal with all the Xenos. The next room can be quite annoying. What you want to do is trigger the fight and run back towards the door that you came in. After you're done dealing with the drone and any Xenos that spawn, go and trigger the next part of the room and run back here again. That way you're nice and safe by your ammo box. So the penultimate fight might look a little bit familiar. Trigger the fight and then run back through the doors that you came and use this hallway as your bottleneck. Just remember, make sure you take down all the eggs before you trigger the fight or you could have a few stray face huggers coming your way. The final battle in the game is really quite simple. Run towards the exit of the encounter and hold up on this catwalk. Save up all your cryo grids, all your turrets because you're going to need them. There's going to be a lot of elites coming your way. But if you're standing here, that means you're not going to have to deal with four different directions full of Xenos. Just make sure your team only runs for ammo in between waves. So that was all the choke points in the game right now. I hope you guys try it out and I hope this helps you out just a little bit. And don't forget, as we get more updates, I'm going to be making more guides like this. So stick around the channel if you love Aliens Fireteam Elite. And as always, I'm TG. If you like what you saw... You know what to do.